Welcome to Catholic Viewpoint, Faith, Hope, and Love, exploring how to live life to its fullest in God's wonderful love for all people. holiness, goodness, and peace of God, we are enabled also to love one another. Let's join our host, Father Michael Kiernan. Hello, viewers. Wonderful to be with you again for another edition of uh, Catholic Viewpoint, Faith, Hope, and Love. And we'll begin, as always, with a little prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, you call us to joyful lives, to blessed lives, to lives of faith, hope, and love. And so you help us to be educated, to know your ways, to experience your goodness, and to put into practice in our own lives the blessings that you want us to have. We ask you to show us your way, wherever we are coming from today, as we uh, watch these, uh, this show later. May it be a time of growth and opportunity for us to lead us closer to the beauty of life. We make our prayer always through Christ our Lord. So maybe, first of all, we start off, uh, whichever of you want to go first, telling us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> uh, well, my, um, I said, Laura Lynn Solano. Um, my maiden name is Formentera, and I was, I was actually born in Fairfield, Travis Air Force Base. Uh, long ago. <laughs> ah, Travis and, uh, Air Force Base. Yes, yeah, well, yeah. I work up at Beale Air Force Base, so. Oh, nice. Great regard <laughs> yeah, for yeah. Travis, too. So I, I was actually baptized there, so I guess um, through the Archdiocese of the military. Yes. Uh, yeah, so that's where I started. Uh, moved a little bit. My dad was in the Navy, um, but we ended up back in, in California. I uh, moved up here to Sacramento in about 2005, 2006, uh, to West Sacramento, and uh, have been here since. Uh, I'm married, uh, and I have four children, uh, three girls, one boy, and um, yeah, I just, uh, I, I've been working for the diocese for about three years now. I started off, you know, you know I was a youth minister and um, DRE at one point, and then eventually I came to work as a campus minister at the Davis Newman Center, and then after that, I came on to what was the Department of Evangelization and Catechesis at the diocese, uh, and eventually... Um, the, the department split into two, and that became the Office of Family and Faith Formation, and that's where I am now. So. Well, how wonderful. And, you know, viewers, uh, I'm sure you're delighted to hear about this uh, wonderful work that uh, Laura Lynn does. One of the great things about the church today, uh, when I was a young priest 500 years ago, <laughs> but anyway, a long time ago, uh, priests already did everything, and we didn't have the help. And it was very taxing and so on. But now we're blessed to have people like yourself and like yourself and many others. And we're all a team. And, of course, the Holy Father and the bishops keep talking about that, about the importance of, the, uh, of our baptism and that each one is equipped. But you uh, would be equipped in a special way because you have special training and so on. But you're designed to help all our people out there in the field, Catholic or non-Catholic, to bring them to the ways of Christ. So what you're doing, I know you do... Uh, the ministry days for the diocese, and that uh, helps huge numbers of people to know more about their faith. So thank you for that. And Chris, of course, you're um, involved with uh, the leadership of the faith formation. So uh, are you in sort of charge of the office, one of the parts of the office there? Or? Sure, yeah. So um, I've been at the diocese now for a year and a half, a little over now. And uh, I'm the director of the Office of Family and Faith Formation. And so this, uh, this covers everything from um, uh, First Communion uh, and uh, confirmation requirements in, and supporting parish faith formation programs in general uh, to we've got uh, a master's degree program that we actually help to form lay leaders around the diocese. We also, uh, my office is in charge of 
uh, marriage preparation, uh, family life ministries, marriage enrichment, uh, and also pastoral care uh, uh, regarding the family. So if there are families that are having difficulties, uh, we have a network of counselors that we can try to help put people in touch with. Um, and also the, the great work of Respect Life is, is a part of our office as well. So, um, of course, especially being here in Sacramento, uh, this being a great um, work of, of the bishops uh, in the whole of California that we, we kind of lead the, the charge with uh, in, in supporting the pro-life cause uh, uh, as a whole. So, so our office is, is quite large as far as the scope of responsibility. And then uh, we, we make do with, uh, with a, a really um, diligent staff that's very faithful and, uh, and uh, never, never a dull moment really in our office. So. Yeah, well, yeah. doing great work. And, uh, but you weren't born in California. Oh, no, no. I, I, I don't sound like I'm from California at all, do I? Uh, I'm actually from North Carolina originally, which maybe is even more perplexing uh, <laughs> with my, my accent the way it is. Um, so I grew up in North Carolina. And uh, my whole life, uh, I was a, a good Protestant. I grew up Methodist, um, and yeah. uh, and I uh, converted to Catholicism uh, at 22 years of age. And that was a uh, that's a story that in was itself. Two years ago, uh, just a few years ago, <laughs> just yeah. Uh, that's a story in itself. I, I found myself a, a very reluctant convert, um, and I, I went through the uh, the RCIA course, which of course is the the class for, for those folks who are thinking about coming to be Catholic. Uh, and um, every week I would always be asking really tough questions of the catechists. Uh, and, uh, Good. and I was always looking for that reason why finally I could say, ah, that's why I, I don't have to become a Catholic. Uh, and I can, I can go back uh, yes. to, to, to the other thing. And um, uh, in the end, I, I didn't have any questions left. They, they answered them all for me in such a way where I had, had to say, uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm going to be a Catholic now. Uh, you know, you often find that to be the case. I know uh, certain ministers, actually, you know, in various denominations who have had that experience. They were annoyed with these Catholics, and <laughs> so they figured they would do some study to prove to themselves what <laughs> was true the things and so on. And eventually then, by studying, they found them. Wow. Gosh, what we got here, you yes. know, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, beginning to find a lot of things that make sense, <laughs> yes. and I didn't think they made sense, and the more I study it, the better or the worse it gets. <laughs> well, <laughs> now i got to make some decisions. Exactly. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I, I've thought about this a lot, especially since I've been working professionally in the church, and that is that um, the, the Catholicism that I encountered as a young adult really reminded me a lot of the... Uh, the worship that I experienced as a young child. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think every, every church, especially in America, in some way is, is trying, to, trying to find that balance of, of mission and being, being relevant to the, to, the, to the world in which it, it finds itself and faithful to the, the traditions which they've received and it's been passed down. Sure. And, um, and, and for me... I think that uh, I, di I didn't really see myself so much in that, that um, community anymore. Uh, that I was looking for something that, that um, some, something that more akin to what I had grown up with. And, and I found that in, in the Catholic Church. So I was really, uh, it was a blessed time. It was a, a, a struggle. It was a challenge. Uh, but, um, you know, God, um, God in his grace and his mercy brought me uh, brought me to to the Catholic faith, and um, it, along the way, I, I had a very strong feeling of a call towards ministry, um, and I didn't know what that looked like. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I actually uh, spent a lot of time overseas. I'd say um, a, a good ten years I spent living in different countries, uh, mostly in Europe, and uh, pursuing ministry. So, at first, even in Rome, I uh, exactly right. Um, so, I lived in Scotland. And I did youth ministry and evangelization in Scotland, mm -hmm. and then I lived in England, uh, in Birmingham, actually. Um, oh, Birmingham! I yeah. lived there for many years myself as a young boy, studying uh, when I was studying in seminary. Oh, right. I worked there on the buildings in order to make money. To uh, at Oscott there. Yes. 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 So, uh, so I worked uh, at the Mary Vale Institute in mm -hmm. Birmingham, and of course. Uh, this is um, the home of uh, John Henry Newman. Uh, after he converted, he, he lived in this uh, building 
uh, where which became the Maryvale Institute, mm -hmm. and so uh, so Newman uh, has a very close uh, place in my heart. Um, we actually went to mass uh, at the parish, the oratory parish there in Birmingham, mm -hmm. and proposed to my wife uh, there in in Birmingham. Um, so then, you know, studies took us along, and um, I, I lived in Austria, I lived in Vienna, uh, where I studied at the International Theological Institute mm -hmm. under the Wonderful. patronage of Cardinal Schoenborn, mm -hmm. uh, the editor of the Catechism, mm -hmm. and then um, eventually did my, my license and my doctoral residency at the Angelicum in Rome. Mm -hmm. And along the way, I've been involved in parish ministry as a director of religious education. I've also adjuncted um, on the faculty for um, a theology faculty at university level and, and taught um, uh, taught uh, bachelor's students and, and master's students as well. And so uh, well equipped then to take on these big responsibilities of faith formation. And I think we have a scripture passage that maybe ties in with uh, that that uh, Laura Lee is going to read for us, uh, giving as it were the the basis of uh, why we teach. Okay. Uh, so it's from a uh, letter from St. Paul to the Romans. For whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another, in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So... I'm sure many of our viewers are, have many different things going on in their lives. Some may not be Catholic, wonder about that. Some may be Catholic, not that involved. A lot of people fall away from the faith at different times. But on the other hand, a lot of people come back to it. And so God is patient with us and so on. So that being said, then, I guess the bottom line of what you're both trying to do is to form a is to create a well-formed laity to help all our people in the church, like I said earlier. So tell us a little bit more then of the practical ways in which the diocese, the bishop yourselves, are able to help the parishes and, and help everybody eventually. I was just sitting there thinking, uh, as Laura Lynn was, was reading the passage, that really everything is grace, right? Uh, the whole of our lives uh, are, is ordered towards, uh, hopefully, please God, uh, our eternal life uh, in heaven, uh, in, in union with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, uh, and every, every moment of our daily lives uh, is, is filled with opportunities where, where God's giving us grace, where he's uh, giving us small consolations or signs uh, on how we can, we can live a truly happy life uh, here in, in this life. Uh, so that we can be with him in the next, and uh, and it's all it's all a grace and it's a mercy, right? Uh, uh, you know, speaking about folks who maybe fall away in one season of life and come back in another season, I'm sure you, as as a priest, have, have seen that many many times over. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, I couldn't help but think of um, the Psalms, right? And uh, it says we have seventy years or eighty if we are strong, mm -hmm. uh, and and I think. Um, thank God that we've got that long to, um, to open ourselves up to that grace of God and, and to work out our salvation uh, uh, with him. Uh, because I know in my own life, uh, I, I need that long, <laughs> right? Uh, and, and I think that that's really what we're trying to do. At the diocese, of course, we're in charge of forming leaders, uh, we're, we're not really in direct ministry. Sure, sure. Uh, you know, we really work to, to form leaders in the local parish level. But, uh, but fundamentally, I'd say it's, it's, we're, trying to, we're trying to build up uh, a, a group of laity who are able to, uh, to be open to that grace, to listen, uh, to discern God's call rightly, and ultimately to be disciples, right? To, mm -hmm. to be followers of Jesus Christ. And to um, and to discern what his mission is for for us in the world. So I don't know, if Laura Lynn, if you wanted to add on to how we do that specifically. Yeah. Well, uh, so by our office, um, you know where, where we are in the pastoral center, uh, we're we're on that arm. We're the extension of bishop, and you know, bishop is the role of the bishop is to stand in the place of um, providing sacraments and formation. Uh, 
uh, well, the Holy Father, Bishop, mm -hmm. and then through the, the priests and, and specifically formation with us. So we are the Office of Family and Faith Formation. And thinking about formation, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, we, we've had discussions, I've had discussions with young adults and they think they need, you know, help in pastoral care or help in learning how to apologetics and all these things. And when it comes down to it, what we've talked a lot about was um, really the need to be formed and conformed to Christ. And it's not so much things here and there, but um, more so how do you build that relationship with Christ so that you're with him and you are now formed to be like him, to be with him. So that's what we try to do with, with all of these things that we're doing. So like the Lay Mission Project, which uh, it's a three-year three -year course. Is that the one with Father... Uh, Father Sweeney. Sweeney yeah. yeah, yeah, and Sean Bryan, also mm -hmm. known as a papal sure, ninja. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we've um, we've just our our first cohort has just made its way through, and we've just started the second cohort. And the role of that is to really um, educate the laity and um, took to it, it's a formation program. So understanding what the role of the laity is, and uh, I was I was blessed to be a facilitator in the first part, and um, the first cohort. I'm sorry. And uh, what we learned, the first course is the lay vocation. And we, you know, Vatican II documents really telling us what our role is as lay people. We are not just uh, default non-ordained people. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not just there to sit in the pews and receive from the priests, but really to, to be collaborators or, you know, um, partners in the vineyard to go out and really spread the gospel and go beyond the places that the clergy are not able to go to, like the homes or the businesses or the schools where we sit as lay people um, in, in, in our daily lives. It's really interesting that, right, uh, Lumen Gentium, one of the documents from the Second Vatican Council, specifically charges the laity uh, with a mission to the secular sphere, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, so the ordained uh, have a responsibility for, for the uh, uh, institutional church and for, for shepherding and leading the flock of the faithful. Uh, but then uh, if you think about the end of the mass, when, when the priest says, uh, go forth, the mass yeah. is ended, right? Uh, the responsibility of the laity in that moment is, is to go out into the secular sphere, into their, to their workplaces and, and into their communities uh, and to be salt and light in the world. Uh, uh, and in, in that way, uh, whereas the priest might have uh, a thousand families, uh, and, and, and has the ability to impact those thousand families directly through, through Mass on the weekends. But those thousand families uh, come into contact with, with so many more uh, people as they go about their business in the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. and, um, and this is that, that uh, collaboration, mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, or Pope Benedict actually coined the phrase co-responsibility. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've heard a lot about that in the last year or two. Um, in thinking about how do, how do not only do we labor together, uh, laity and clergy, but, but how do we take a real ownership of our part of the mission mm -hmm. uh, to go make disciples of all nations? Uh, and, and how do we support each other? In that? Well, generally speaking, when we get people come into the RCIA program, you hardly ever hear anybody saying, I came in because of Father A or Father B or whatever it is, because they, don't have much, they wouldn't have much contact with Father yeah, A or Father exactly. B. Exactly. Yeah. But they'll say, Somebody, John Smith at Worth, I was so impressed by their faith and putting their faith into practice and living it. And I just observed them and so on and so on. And then I got saying to myself, well, gosh, the way they live their life, well, that's a good way to live a life. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so in that sense, uh, everybody has an opportunity to evangelize. And of course, we, it's not always evangelizing in the sense of, you know, I'm going to make you a Catholic by next <laughs> week. No, it can be just the way one lives one's life. Yes. And, uh, being out there and talking to people and so on, and eventually they see the light. And, and uh, yeah, I believe it was um, it was Paul the Sixth, Saint Paul the Sixth, now, uh, who said, "Modern man doesn't listen to teachers; he listens to witnesses." Yes. And if he listens to teachers, it's because they are witnesses. Yeah. Right. This this primacy of witnessing to the joy of the gospel and and to what Christ has done in our lives is the way that everybody. Uh, is in, in the first place an evangelizer, right? In, in witnessing to the love that they've encountered uh, and, uh, and sharing that joy with others. Now, there's been various kind of documents and so on put out by different popes and so on. There's speculation that there's going to be a big document by Pope Francis sometime this year on the whole question of uh, uh, 
evangelization. He's been talking for a long time about this. Yes. I don't know when it'll be, a month from now, a year from now, 10 years from now. But things do change. And so there could be, you know, with proper evangelization opportunities, there's a lot of people out there in the world can't be satisfied with the way it is at the moment. It's, it's not satisfying people's lives. So you wonder, is there any talk about that coming up? Yeah, you know, we actually, um, we've been spending every week for the last couple of weeks, our kind of our, our office's New Year's resolution, mm-hmm. as it were, um, spending some time with um, the, the proceedings from the National uh, Fifth Encuentro. Uh, I don't know if, if you're aware, the, uh, just a year and a half ago, mm-hmm. there was a national gathering of folks involved in Hispanic pastoral ministry from around the country. And, um, and the, docu- the whole model, actually, for the process was based on Pope Francis's Evangelii Gaudium, his, his encyclical, The Joy of the Gospel. And uh, one of the things that I've been sitting with a lot the last couple of weeks is uh, the relationship between the institutional church and the processes and administrative structures uh, and the work of evangelization. I think one of the, uh, the real genius uh, that Pope Francis brings to the papacy is his sense, of, his sense of, of pastoral concern. We know that it, 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 the way we've been doing it, it isn't working uh, anymore. And, and maybe it never worked, but, but, um, but we've got to feel free to try something new uh, in order to, um, to re-engage ourselves in the mission uh, of the gospel. And, and I think that, that pastoral genius, uh, I mean, one, one thing that he says is even, um, even administrative structures that are good, if they, if they don't evangelize, if, if they don't uh, work in service of the mission, uh, can hurt the mission, right? Yeah. And, and so I think he's got an insight uh, that, um, uh, that, that something we can learn from. And so I'm really uh, curious to see what comes out in the next year from Pope Francis. Um, there's lots of, of questions about, um, uh, you know, how the church is organized, how, how um, uh, for instance, the Sacrament of Holy Orders and, and how the work of the church is done uh, in relation between those who, who are lay or those who are, are in orders or, or the role of the diaconate in, mm-hmm. in all of this. And... Um, Insofar as insofar as they um, this conversation is trying to to build up the the role of the church in the world, then I, I think this is good good to have an open conversation, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 not to be afraid of where the conversation goes and get everybody involved. In e- exactly, and, and, and realizing the Holy Spirit's working through that conversation. And uh, but yeah. so we're getting on towards the end of our show, if you can believe it. But uh, any. One thing, maybe a very brief uh, final comment from either of you of something you'd like to say to viewers, uh, you know, that might bless their lives, enrich their lives. Uh, you know, with the, the many different documents and the many different things that we're trying to evangelize, I think it really comes down to that relationship with Jesus and um, just being his friend and uh, in friendship uh, we, we conform to one another. And um, I think by doing that, that naturally will allow us to go out and be friends with everyone, uh, the Holy Spirit dwelling within them. So the key really is through all of this and all of these things is really we're, we're trying to form us to be formed to Christ and to be with him, to walk with him. And um, I think that's, that's the main thing. So. Well, as the song goes, what a friend we have in Jesus. Uh, indeed, it's very true. So anything to wrap up there, uh, Chris? Yeah, uh, I, I think Laura Lynn's got it exactly right. Um, it's, it's, St. Thomas Aquinas says that charity is the form of all the virtues. And, uh, and if we seek, uh, and indeed uh, St. Paul says that uh, faith and hope will pass away and, and, and charity will remain. Uh, I, think, I think fundamentally charity is this friendship with Christ that, that we share with others. And... Uh, and in that regard, this is exactly the point. So, Well, how beautiful. These are wonderful things that uh, you've said, and thanks for sharing all these things. We could talk about this for a whole day or a whole week, really. But um, hopefully, viewers, this is uh, something to whet your interest and uh, to encourage you if you're searching. Uh, the previous show, we were talking about being on a journey. We're always on a journey in the Lord, and we're always becoming, we're always growing, and so on. 
So these uh, two people, uh, Chris and Orlin, are here uh, working with the rest of the diocese to promote and support uh, us all. So God bless you uh, today. And so, um, Lord, we thank you now for this uh, nice time. And we hope that uh, all of us will be able to open our hearts to deeper faith, deeper joy, and great love. Thank you for watching Catholic Viewpoint, Faith, Hope, and Love. For more information on the Catholic way of life, please go to your local parish, where priests and other friendly staff are happy to serve you. Also, your diocesan website provides great information on parishes, programs, and much more. You can experience Catholicism on relevant radio at 1620 a.m. And be sure to explore the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops website and EWTN programming. You may email us with questions or comments at catholicviewpoint at gmail.com. God bless your faith journey at whatever stage you are at this moment. Till next time, God's peace and joy be with you and all you love.